Well, welcome friends to Lesson 1, Psalm 23. So more people have acquainted themselves with this passage of scripture than any part of their Bibles. I'm sure this Psalm has comforted you and will be a source of great strength and comfort when you need it most. David writes his Psalm most likely when he was king, and it's a metaphor to teach and encourage and refresh our souls by providing this spiritual picture that helps us see a spiritual reality as we follow our shepherd Jesus. But I think there's something very practical and telling about us and our humanity and very hopeful about God and his deity that we can take in our day-to-day -day journey as we're following Christ. Things that we learn about God, but also things that we learn about ourselves. Simply put, it's just not about you. It's not about me. It's actually all about him. And I love what Colossians 1.16 tells us. It says that all things were made by him and for him, and that includes you and me. You and I exist for our Lord Jesus, our shepherd, to live for him as he enables us to do that by guiding us and leading us in our day-to-day -day life, in our faith journey. Even as I was reading and preparing this passage this week, I was strengthened and encouraged to know that God really truly cares about me and my dependence on him, that he wants to be the only one to provide that peace. He wants to take care of my needs. He wants to protect me. And he wants to make sure that everything I'm walking through, the difficult things and the blessings too, are all set with a purpose. And he wants to make sure that I understand that as he guides and leads me in my faith journey. Sometimes it's up a mountain or across difficult terrain. Sometimes it's moving through obstacles that come in our path. But I think, friends, as we've been really looking at the last couple years, sometimes it's leading us through a valley, a valley of unknown, a valley of waiting, a valley of not having any idea what's on the other side. But here's the good news about our shepherd. Is the shepherd just doesn't say you're going to the valley. He says you're going through the valley as he leads us. In other words, we're going to make it. And he knows where he's taking us. And he's always has our best interests in mind and promises to sustain us and, and provide for us no matter what that journey looks like. I'm so encouraged just remembering that from Psalm 23. Well, how do we know this? Because David testifies in his own walk with God and what he learned from his great shepherd, what he learned about himself as a sheep, that often he found himself lost in, in some long seasons of waiting on God. Um, but he also knows in the earlier days before he was a king, he was a shepherd watching the flocks of his father. He spent hours studying the life of sheep as he cared for them until God called him to shepherd the people of Israel. David lived having experienced the blessings of being under the guidance and comfort of God's care, but also the consequence of when he chose to wander and disobey God. Because like David, all of us, Isaiah 53, 6 says, all of us are like sheep and we've gone astray. Each of us are prone to turn to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I want to just kind of give you some additional reading as you prepare yourself in Psalm 23. And that's to go into John and read chapter 10, which is all about Jesus as our good shepherd and us as his sheep. So that's just some additional reading for you. But I think the big question as we begin our reading in Psalm 23 is, it comes down to trust. Do, do I trust the shepherd? Have I embraced him as my shepherd? And am I content where he's leading me? Because sometimes sheep and the shepherd are often in disagreement where we're going. So I want to begin our time and I just want to read through Psalm 23. Listen to the words and listen to some of the things that you're picking up about what you're learning about God as your shepherd and your tendency as a sheep. Verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters, and he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. For you've prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies, 
and you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Gosh, it's just beautiful. Just even reading the word, I just can feel that, that peace overwhelm my soul as I'm going about my busy day already. But I want to make some observations. I want to talk about God first. I just want to see what do we learn about God as our shepherd through these words that David has written. Someone who knew Dave really well, a man after God's own heart. I think the first thing we have to learn and, and begin to trust is that our shepherd leaves us always with our best interests in mind. You know, God is leading us as he sees our lives fit. And it, sometimes it just doesn't make any sense to us. It might hurt, it might be uncomfortable, but the shepherd always has a better perspective than his sheep. He sees things that they do not, and he knows things that they do not. And as our good shepherd, we can trust that he will provide for his own for every need we will ever have. Philippians 4.19, that verse that says, And my God will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Now this does not mean that he will provide for everything we want, but it's a promise that he will provide for everything we need. So if you are in want right now, or if I'm in want, it often just indicates that we are seeking other things to fulfill and satisfy us who don't often have our best interest in mind. Our shepherd provides for us by making us lie down in green pastures and leading us beside still waters. Sometimes a shepherd must make us lie down in those green pastures so that we can feed and grow. Now, I did a little research on sheep that you might not know, because I certainly did not know. But what I learned is that sheep do not lie down unless four conditions are met. The first is um, they will not lie down if they are afraid because they're timid. Because they're social animals, they will not lie down if there's friction between uh, um, other sheep. Um, if flies or parasites trouble them, they will not lie down. And finally, if sheep are anxious about food or, hunger, or, or they're hungry, they will also not lie down. So rest comes because a shepherd has dealt with fear, friction, flies, and famine. You see, often we can become so busy in our lives that we don't have a sense to take that rest in Him. So God just makes us lie down because we're not very f smart and this forced rest often is so that He can take care of those things that, that are keeping us from that rest. Taking care of our fears, taking care of our basic needs, taking care of um, relationships that, that have robbed us of that rest. So this is how our shepherd provides for us. And I don't know about you, but I've been in this season and I can see some of my current challenges is actually the very tools that God is using for me to take that forced rest so that I can sit in his green pastures and I can be reminded of the word of God that he wants to feed me with. Um, the Word of God is living and active. It's our bread of life. It's our manna. And that is only found in the pastures that He leads us to. He leads me beside still waters. You see, sheep are afraid of moving water. And even if they are dying of thirst, they will not go near a running brook or a creek. But they love the still waters. But sheep don't gravitate towards still waters. More often, they gravitate towards troubled waters and, and when, they, when they could possibly get in over their heads. But God knows, as our great shepherd, that refreshment and what restores our weary souls are when we drink freely from Him, who is the living water. God has the power to stop the storms of our circumstances, but He also has the power to stop the storms of our heart, bringing about that stillness that we often need to calm the anxiety or the worry or the depression or the bitterness. And more often than not, it would seem that God seeks to still the waters of our heart before he stills the waters of our circumstances because God is at work to bring about that peace and that stillness from the inside out. He wants to grow us 
And so he's leading us often towards a type of spiritual stillness that's going to deepen and mature and grow our faith that only comes when we have absolute dependence on him. And just think about that as a sheep and as a sheep I am as well. Think about some of the rocky terrain that you're navigating, some of the, the unknowns that you're in, the valley. Maybe it's, it's some obstacles currently in your day to day. Think about how God is using those things to bring you ultimately to that rest that only he can provide. God provides by being our peace, and he is a source of true comfort for us. It says, he restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is really important. When we grow weary with the troubles of our life, this crazy season, our shepherd, in the midst of those crazy things that we're dealing with, wants to restore and refresh us right now. Meaning we do not have to experience when we've come out of it. It's actually what we experience in the midst of it. Because sheep are not always aware of where they're going. We're not always aware of where God is taking us. And we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And in fact, our nature sometimes is to get off God's path and walk right off a cliff. And so it's, it's in our best interest that the good shepherd would lead us in this protective path that, that is a way that only comes through his righteousness. It comes from trusting that he knows where he's taking us. It comes from obeying what he says. And we do this not for our glory or for our sake. Our chief purpose as sheep is to bring glory to God for his name's sake as we follow him and, um, and trust him with our lives. It's, it's really just about elevating his name's sake through, th through the way that we follow him. It will be harder for God to lead us, and it's probably difficult to lead a sheep that keeps taking, taking, um, that keeps taking off and veering off the path and, and doing things their own way um, to, for their sake because they want to control the outcome because, because they don't trust God. I mean, when we're doing that in our life, and think about how easily we do that, we're really doing that to feel better about ourselves. We're really doing that to maybe look good or um, to, to build our name's sake, but we're not, or our desire's sake or our will's sake but we're not doing it for God's sake. And I think what David is really getting us to think about is that there's actually something very comforting and knowing that wherever God is leading us, it really is about his name's sake, that he's taking full responsibility for how our life's gonna unfold as we trust and obey him. And if you have enough history with God, his ways are always the best ways. Father knows best and we can trust that. It says in verse, um, verse 4, what we learned about God is that God is our protector. That even when we walk through this valley in the shadow of death, we do not have to fear evil because God is with us and he has these tools, his rod and his staff, and these are the very things that guide us and comfort us. You see, sheep are very susceptible to predators, just as we are as sheep. And Satan in scripture is, is like a roaring lion who roams around seeking who he can devour while he was walking and waiting in the shadows of our life. But our daily walk with God, as it's filled with trials and troubles and we're out of our comfort zone, he is with us and he is our stronghold and our protector in those times. There is nothing that we have to fear. We do not have to fear evil, and we do not have to fear those things in our life that are seeking to sabotage our rest. It's because God is with us, because the shepherd knows where he's taking us, that we can be, take comfort in that very promise and that very truth. You see, I get it, sheep without a shepherd, they can be easily frightened and startled. Um, but when we have a shepherd who has our best interest in mind, we don't have to fear that. In fact, I was reading that sheep that don't have a, sh uh, have a shepherd, when a predator approaches them, they've actually been so startled to death that they've died of a heart attack. That's the kind of fear that grips a sheep without a shepherd. 
And, um, and it says here, how does he protect us then? Verse four says his rod and his staff, those are the tools that he uses to protect us. Well, how does a rod help the shepherd? It was because the rod was used to protect against the predators, he could defend the sheep in case of attack. He could also guide the sheep and keep them in that right path so that they did not wander from it. The rod was not only useful for a weapon, but also it symbolized authority over the sheep. And that's what God, God's rod does in our life. Yet the staff, on the other hand, it had a bend to it. And the bend was fitted perfectly for bringing in those stray sheep by their necks. It was so perfectly shaped that it never choked the sheep, but it was narrow enough to be able to bring the sheep back into the fold in a gentle, gentle loving, yet firm way. You see, if sheep were to end up on their backs, they could not get themselves up and they would actually die of starvation on their backs. That's why it was always so comforting to the sheep to have their shepherd near them with both of these tools in mind. And those are the same tools that God uses as we walk through dark seasons of life and we're navigating fears and trials and tribulations that we need to be assured that these tools that God uses are not vindictive for our punishment, but they're actually loving for our comfort and for our good because ultimately he's protecting us um, because he knows that as sheep, we will often choose outside of what is best for us. And it says that even though we're walking through these shadows of death, he's leading us on this path of righteousness for his name's sake, that we can be assured that God has power over evil and he will not let evil overcome us. And I love that, that fear is one of, the, one of the emotions that the enemy uses to overcome us and overtake us and actually veer us off the path where we begin to doubt and trust God. Um, but we can be assured that God is even over our fears and that he's working those fears out in our life in a way that's going to be victorious as we let him guide us. Um, and it's, there's no, there's probably great purpose that fear is mentioned 365 times in the Bible because God knows as us, as sheep, that we, fear is one of the biggest emotions that we're going to live and become consumed by in this world. And he wants us to be free of that. Because the fourth thing that we learn about God in Psalm 23 is that God just wants to bless our lives. He has our best interests. He wants to protect us. He wants to provide for us. He wants to um, comfort us, but he also just wants to bless us. And it says in this, this last part of, part of um, Psalm 23 that he's prepared a table before me in the presence of the enemies and that he's anointed our head with oil and our cup overflows, that God has prepared a table for two. You and I get to sit at the table and, and he's anointed us with, with, an, uh, with oil. And in the Bible, oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And in biblical times, when you were anointed with this kind of oil, it meant that you were effectively declaring that person or that priest or that king to be set apart for some specific purpose. And, and it was a token of the being set apart, not just for religious service, but also for kingdom purpose. So here's the promise for us, that when you and I as sheep are following our shepherd and we're going through seasons of darkness, God is not only preparing this table where we can be in relationship with him in the midst of our enemies and in the midst of darkness, but also that he's setting apart a special purpose, that he's using all of these things for our good, for his great purpose. And because of that, because of that purpose and because of the way he's working all of that out in our life, our cup overflows, that, that we lack nothing. Our circumstances, while they seek to sometimes rob us of what we think we're lacking, they're actually the very thing that God wants us to see as the things that we can be grateful for. Um, it's the things that he's using with, with great purpose to not only mature and um, develop us and grow our perseverance and our faith, 
but also it's going to become the stories, your story and my story, our sheep stories, that are going to testify to this kind of relationship that God wants to have with the rest of the sheep who are still lost and have gone astray, that we become examples to the rest of the world of a life that looks rested and a life that's full of goodness and a life that's overflowing with gratitude because we have put our trust in our shepherd. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, sheep ultimately put their trust in the shepherd, but the shepherd knows where he's going and where he's taking them. And friends, for you and I, there's something so much bigger than this pasture that we're living in on earth, this kingdom on earth, that there's an eternal pasture that we're going to feast forever and we're going to come face to face with our great shepherd. And that eternal assurance should provide the means for us to stay the course and keep following Jesus, even though we don't know what's on the other side of today or tomorrow. So friends, as you dig into Psalm 23, pay attention to the things that God wants to strengthen you in in terms of who he is and his character and the attributes and what he wants to provide for you as your great shepherd and pay attention to just where you're at in the sheep pen you know where are you on the path following him and trusting him and obeying him have you gotten off the path and if have you've gotten off the path path then allow god to just bring you back in lovingly with that with that staff, you know, or maybe you're in a season where you're going through some discipline. Um, see that as a good thing because God, our great shepherd, disciplines those he loves. And um, so just use this beautiful psalm, this spiritual metaphor, the spiritual reality, very practically right here, right now, this week, as you seek to, to get to know your shepherd and as you seek to follow him and trust him and um, allow him to lead you towards that greener grass and those still waters, rest for your soul, comfort for your circumstances, and purpose that you may not be able to see right now, but purpose that's, that's um, coming very soon. Enjoy your time with God, and I can't wait to hear some of the great things that you're learning, not just by yourself with the Lord, but as you're living this out with other people. Have a great week.